do it on a laptop is that the recording is on the laptop, so the image quality is higher. Whereas if you record on the cloud, you get what you get. But yeah, okay. Um, let's have a look. So today, last week, uh, we worked on um, up to cloud hands. And today, and, and then through snake groups down and to golden cock. And so this week, we're going to work on um, golden cock and the kicks. The main thing is when it's easy to get the movements because all of us have been going to classes for uh, a while. So getting getting a basic frame and the movements is fine. But once you start to apply the five loosening exercises to the movements, then you realize, like for example, to go from uh, snake groups down to golden cock, you use compression to use exercise number two that will lift you through that supporting leg. And you, you need reasonable body strength to do that. So it's much better when you first do it to take a smaller stance. Otherwise, you take a nice big snake creeps down, looks lovely, but you just don't have the muscle strength or, or mechanical alignment to get up. Uh, and then when you compress into the next leg, um, although it's a kick, um, the difference between Tai Chi... <laughs> There's an old episode of Simpsons. Well, an old episode. It was years ago when I saw it. Uh, and um, Lisa and Bart were fighting. And the parents said, hey, stop that fighting. And I packed it in, told them off. And I said, okay. And they agreed to stop fighting. But then um, Bart said, well, I'm just going to walk forwards and keep sticking my leg out. And if, and if you're in the way of my leg, you'll get hit. But I'm not doing it. I'm not kicking you. I'm just sticking my foot out. But if you're in the way, you'll get hit. And Lisa said, okay, so I'm going to walk around the room swinging my arms, but I'm not going to hit anybody. But if you're in the way of my arms, you get hit. And so they, they weren't really fighting. But if they got in each other's way, they were fighting, but they weren't fighting, were they? Because the other person walked into the strike. And so Tai Chi is kind of like that. Uh, you don't punch or kick people. You just line your body up correctly so that person punches or kicks themselves. So, for example, if, if I'm doing a uh, um, flag down parry and punch, what I'm not doing is blocking something and hitting them. What I'm doing is parrying something and moving into position so their body hits that. In effect, you, you're allowing them to fall, and all you're doing is putting your fist in a way to stop them falling over. It's kind of helping them, isn't it, really? You're putting your fist in a way to stop them falling over. How generous is that, really, when you think about it? You're not hitting them at all. You're doing the Bart Simpson, you're putting your fists in the way to stop them falling over. And if they're falling quite quickly, then they fall quite quickly under your hand. And that's their fault, not yours. They shouldn't have come in so quickly, should they? Okay. <laughs> and so if you think about that, you deflect down, so they punch you, not blocking, you just lead the punch past you, so that their energy is continuing. You lead their punch past you, continue the deflection, so their energy is still going, and then you put your hand in the right place, a line through your body, so they hit your leg, which hits the ground. So I'm not punching them, I'm just moving them and putting my hand in the way of their body, so their head, their body, whatever it might be. I'm just leaving their force past me, do my push hands practice, and I position myself structurally correct. So if they bump into it, that's their fault, and they just get as though they hit the floor. And the same with the kicks. When you kick, it's not like I'm going, um, oh, and so the, light, the light does pick up in a second. It's not like I'm going uh, block, and it's not like I'm trying to block somebody and then kick them. It's not like I'm trying to block someone and then kick them. What's actually happening is I move and I put my foot out. So I move and I put my foot out. And so if their leg comes forwards, they hit their shin against my foot. So when we do the kicks in a moment, remember, you're not trying to kick somebody, you're just aligning yourself correctly. And if somebody walks into that foot, into that leg, if that hits them in the stomach, in the groin, in the leg, or the knee of the shin, where, wherever it hits them. Unfortunately, it seems like uh, the Z on your computer keeps changing the color shade. Anyway, if they, um, wherever they kick, they touch. Okay. So I'm going to put this on a big screen and we're going to go through that movement. Uh, in the video, so I can see it. Remember, any time if you have any questions, turn your microphone on and give me a shout. 
I just going to drink a bit. I'm a holiday, it's perfectly allowed. In fact, uh, over the holiday, I've been reading two books, but both that were set in Hong Kong. One was uh, Dan Doherty, his kind of um, his life story kind of thing. So he was a policeman in Hong Kong. People may know Dan, may not, but he learned he trained Tai Chi in Hong Kong. The other one is uh, Jackie Chan, who again was an actor and trained in martial arts uh, and lived mostly in Hong Kong. And it's interesting, both of their stories about they did their martial arts training and how they tested it on the streets and various things like that. But commonality is lots of references to alcohol. So uh, it seems only fair that I drink too while I'm on holiday. So as I said, remember, if I'm doing the kicks, we, we, we will break them down. If I'm doing the kicks, what I'm not doing is moving and kicking someone. It's not karate. I'm not moving and kicking or moving and kicking like Thai boxing. What I'm actually doing is moving into alignment, putting my foot out. And as that person comes in, in effect, they walk onto my foot. So my foot has to be aligned to when my foot hits them or they hit my foot, they hit my other leg, which is connected to the ground. So I'm not kicking, I'm aligning correctly, and they hit. So then we just want to do a golden cock. I'm not trying to knee someone. I'm not doing Thai boxing, I'm not trying to knee someone. I move my body into alignment, move my body in. So that knee is the ground. The reason I'm telling you this is it means that I'm not trying to apply the force. I'm trying to apply alignment. The force comes through, me being correctly aligned, and then bumping into it. It's as if I've got a, it's a bit like um, I don't know, a Charlie Chaplin sketch, or you know, where you've got a boxing glove and a stick, and you open a door, and the person runs into the door and hits themselves on a boxing glove. So if you think of Tai Chi, it's <clears throat> everything we do is about. Um, making that person miss us, so by yielding and neutralizing. So when they come in, they don't hit us solidly, they, they miss, and they in their missing, their energy keeps moving. And when that energy keeps moving, we just put things in place, so that energy hits the leg, or hits the knee, or hits the foot. We're not trying to kick or punch, or elbow anybody, we put that body in alignment. So everything we do in Tai Chi is about structural alignment. That's why it doesn't make any difference because I'm punching somebody when I'm picking up a chair or picking up a pint of beer. Okay, so whatever you do, remember, your sole job is to create alignment, and that alignment is about your balance, your connection to the ground. All right. So we'll get to the kicks and so on as we carry on through, but first let's start off with loosening exercises. So from here, you just bounce. Remember, as you bounce, you're bouncing through your whole body, as if you're bouncing on a space hopper or a Pilates exercise ball, or you're standing on a trampoline. So your whole body is connecting and bouncing through your body. The same thing applies. If you had a heavy punch bag, you could bounce and hit the bag, bounce and hit the bag, bounce and hit the bag. So if you're interested in the martial aspects of it, if you do have uh, a hanging punch bag, you can test against it. You can bounce and hit and bounce and hit and bounce and hit nice and loose. You're not trying to strike. What you're looking to do is get a feeling of connection through your body. So anything that touches your hand touches the floor. We used to have this game with my grandkids and they quite liked it. I would bounce, bounce, bounce like this. And when I would get used to that bouncy feeling, they'd stand there and I'd walk over and bump into them and throw them in the air. Just in effect, I would just bounce them off the ground. And they loved it because they went airborne really quick and landed on a city where I would catch them. It says, no matter how you're using this, this rebound force through your body, you can practice doing it. Practice having something you can pick up and grab and throw up in the air. Even if it's stuff on the garden, just to get a feeling for it. 
grandkids are fine because they always have to be thrown in the air anyway. So what I'm doing is bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. One leg forward and backwards. So here, I'm going to do bouncing from one leg to the other, one leg to the other. Bounce, 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 bounce. So I'm practicing developing the rebound through my body. Some of you may have seen a photo. This, this tall thin tree here. The woodpecker seems to love living up and down that. He lands at the bottom, works his way up, and then jumps onto the feed over there. So I'm just scared of my moving. Yeah, but the woodpecker did post a photo, and that was on that tree. Bounce, bounce. Change legs. Again, as you can see, I'm doing bounce back leg, bounce front leg, bounce back leg, bounce front leg. So if I was doing push hands, it's up and away. Um, I'm looking forward to getting back to training again. Uh, so from March 17th, so May the 17th onwards, uh, we'll be able to open the indoor classes again, which means the Sunday sessions, I'm going to start those in June. So the first one will be in June, maybe one in July. But it does mean that we're going to do the weekend camp. And that weekend camp is I'm looking at the first weekend in, in worst, first weekend in October. So that's second and third of October, weekend camp in Bourneville. Okay, step back and turn, change from number one up, release, turn up, extend, push it up three feet, extend that to your hands and turn. Up, extend, and turn. Hopefully you, you've all been, you all received the uh, YouTube playlist link so you can watch the classes back. Ah. Ah. Release, extend, turn. Ah. Extend, turn. Ah. Extend, turn. Ah, release, extend. Compress. This is the movement that you focus on when you're doing golden cock or kicks. This is how you're extending. Many years ago, we used to have um, a heavy hanging bag for practicing the martial classes. And it was uh, five foot tall, full of wood shavings. And it would take two of us, we'd wheel it out of the trolley, it would take two or three of us to pick it up and hang it on the bracket. And it wasn't that we wanted to punch it hard. So you remember, it's not a karate class or a kung fu class. It's that we wanted to use that weight of that bag. And when you hit it, it connected to your feet. It wasn't that you were punching out. So you were connecting your hand to the bag, to your feet, or your elbow to the hand, to the bag, to the feet, or your knee, to your body, through your feet. We were using it as a kind of feedback training tool. It's hit quite hard, but not, it's not about how hard you hit the bag. It's a feedback through your body, and how you connect you to the ground. When I used to do those uh, open um, push-hands, and people could come from any martial arts or different schools of Tai Chi, when we first did it, 
all the karate people and the kickboxing people all saw this big heavy bag and they would go walking straight up to it and punch it or kick it and you can see the shock on her face because if you punch wood shavings hard it's a lump of wood and so the, we, we were we were whacking it and elbowing it and kneeing it and shoulder and it looked like we we're hitting it really hard but we were connecting to her body to the ground we went bothered about the bag so much but they went up and punched the bag you can see them go a little bit pale because they hurt the hand or hurt the leg or hurt their elbow and we weren't bothered because we weren't working in the same way gave a bit of an advantage when you did to the martial stuff because they were a bit scared <laughs> they would be hit them so hard because the bag didn't hurt us but what we're doing is connecting using this compression so when we hit the bag it connected to the ground we won't hit the bag we were just connecting Turn, change, turn. You're creating the torque in your body, rotation. Turn, turn. So remember this movement you see a lot in cloud hands. This movement is what allows you to get up to golden cock. So you, you wait turn that releases your foot so you can move into golden cock. Move into your body, move your waist. Move into your body, move your waist so your knee can lift the golden cock. Boom. It's the compression and the torque and the expansion and all those various uses of a song is relaxed and alive. It's key to Tai Chi as a martial art and as a health art. Turn, turn, turn. Remember, it doesn't matter whether you're using Tai Chi as a martial art or using it an exercise for health and well being. Connecting your whole body through your breathing and your alignment are key to making it effective. Otherwise, you're just doing a slow dance. So fingers are alive and relaxed, whole bodies are alive and relaxed. Is it, uh, I had to go to Aikido probably in the 80s. And they used to do this trick, they call it the unbendable arm trick and you put your arm out on their shoulder and they would focus their key, their energy and you wouldn't be able to bend the arm and in Tai Chi we call that Sung or Pung you relax relaxed and alive so alive and strong and pliable so it has the power and strength of a hose pipe full of water and the pliability and resilience of a hose pipe full of water not the rigidity of an iron bar or stick that can be snapped. Okay. Sung turning alive. And then number three, number four. And this is release your body, open. Mobilize your shoulder blades, mobilize your spine. Mobilize your scapula. All the upper body, chest open, shoulders back, elbows forwards, sink. Hands together, push out, bend your knees, swing through, mobilizing your spine. Swing in side to side. Roll your shoulders, mobilizing your spine and your hips. Knees forwards, curl up. Just look around. Sink the chest, pluck the back alive. Hands together. 
push in your knees, swing through. And side to side. Roll your shoulders. Knees forwards, curl up through your body. And number five, number five is vertical circle. So you turn and up. Even the green pinches like Tai Chi, sat there in the basket, not fuzzy. Feel and toe. And up. Uh. Body back and forwards. And up. Uh. Here and so again, once more inside and ah, uh, you create this vertical circle. And push up that leg, falling off, catching, pushing up that leg, falling off, catching, pushing up that leg. Here and so. And both the circle under up. The catching, pushing up. Pushing, pushing up, like a big golden clock. Catching, pushing up. Here we go. Bring in here. Almost like I'm pulling my sock on. Pulling my sock on. Turn. Okay, so the more you practice these five loosening exercises, the more you get the whole body connected. So even if you just chose one to get the feeling of the one, then felt that one as you go through your form practice, then do another one and feel that one. So what I personally do is I'll do one of the movements for about a minute or two till I really get the feel of it. Then I'll do four or five movements in a Tai Chi form to connect myself in that way. And then I'll do the next movement, maybe a couple of minutes once I've got the feeling of it in my body, then I'll do a few four movements and I'll work my way through the five exercises doing that the same couple of minutes and applying that feeling, that body feeling, that connection mindfully through some form practice. And once I've done each of those, and I've done all those movements that might take me half an hour. Then I'll start doing my form practice completely and looking at where I can notice them. Okay. So let's go through the form together. Build up space. Preparation. Well, Right. back. Push. Single whip.
this time move back shoulder what's playing straight wing push the twist step step up play guitar rushing twist step Like down parry and punch. And close up. Cross hands. Break tiger, return to mountain. Oops, move over a bit. Roll back. Press. Push. Diagonal single whip. Twist and rail bow. Little monkey. Bend your foot, two, three, diagonal flying, no hands, Make creeps down. One cock stands on one leg. Second golden cock. First toe kick. So I'm just going to do the two kicks or three kicks. Sit back. Walk back. Walk back. Kick. Back. Roll back. Kick. Turn the kick with the heel. You can put your foot down if you want. Kick. Okay. Now remember the two toe kicks. When I'm kicking out, I'm parrying. Taking that person past, striking. So I'm parrying, taking the hand past, strike. Parry, take the pass, strike. What I'm doing is put my foot out. So I'm not I'm not kicking them, I'm putting my foot out, and touch, foot out, touch. Hurry, touch. Hurry, touch. Hurry, touch. Send the side. Hurry, touch. Hurry, touch. I'm not trying to kick them. Hurry, touch. Hurry, touch. There's no swinging. Foot's coming off the floor and touch, 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 touch. Okay. Give me one sec. I forgot to put my phone on silent. Lee. Okay. So, so the aim, the aim with golden cock is just the same as uh, we do in compression movement, compression. So we body in through and push up so that power comes from the ground step back press down push it up from here I'm gonna step back so you can see I'm gonna step back and my body's forwards so I'm not stepping backwards I'm stepping back forwards Boom. if you want to you can imagine packing someone step back forwards I'll turn so you can see here. So I don't step back. 
and step back, step back. When my head doesn't leave, my head's over my foot, I step back, head's over my foot. So I'm forwards. Pump. I'm going to step back, forwards, sit back, roll back, and leave my feet busy. Sit back, head's over my foot still. I'm exaggerating the lean so you can see. But head's over my foot. Head's over my front foot. I'll step back, forwards, sit back, move away from my hand. We work with his left my foot, like in Repulse Monkey. Roll back, bring my toe, foot in, around. So now I just bring my toe in and the hips in. So I'm sitting on that back leg. So I'm sitting comfortably on that back leg. Look. Okay. Sit back, roll back, toe in, foot in, sitting comfortably on the back leg, can kick. Pump up, pump forwards, with away from my hands, roll back. And then roll back, I'm extending over there, roll back, around, separate, and kick. So the reason it's easy to balance, easier to balance, is that I'm moving myself into balance to be able to do it. I'm stepping back as far as he's comfortable, not, not a long way, just as far as he's comfortable. Stepping back, sink into the front leg, see? The so golden cock, step back, the weight still in the front leg, body still forwards, sinking down. I'm going under up, which means my body is still forwards, like in Repulse Monkey. I roll, toe, the toe comes in, but then you're still forwards from the back leg. And that's also deflecting. So somebody's punching in and deflecting, but also extending. Around, cross. And that's going to lead the person past. I separate the person past. I separate my toe and foot. So the back hand is by my back ear. The back hand is by my ear. And the front foot and front toe are in line. The toe and the hand are in line. I'm not kicking over there and punching over there. Turn hand in line, back hand at the highest moment. Remember, my golden cock, quite close to this, you can see I'm going to kick this quite easily. So at the moment, my toe is touching the chair leg. Golden cock. Sit back, hand the head, body forwards. So over the chair leg. Move my body back away from my foot. You can see here, I move my body back away from my hand. I turn around. So kick. So if you want to practice it, you might want to use a uh, suspense so you can see the same. Touch your foot, touch it, but I'm using the chair now so you can see, you can see through it. So you might practice it at home against a leg of a stool or something like that. So I got my toe against this. Golden cock, back, head, hand forwards, move away from my hand, roll back, which brings my toe in, around, I want to separate, toe goes back to where it was, so I'm just going to kick what's just in front of me. That means if someone's punching towards me, I'm going to deflect them past and hit them and kick them, because they're coming in, they want to hit me. I'm going to deflect them past, take them away, hit and kick, hit and kick. That's why you get a slap across the face or a chop in the collarbone, like a hit and kick. So that can be chopping the side of the neck. So the neck can be slap at the face. This one's taking the hand away, so you're extending the person open. You're extending the person open and hitting the neck or slapping the face and kicking the shin. And for your alignment, toe, long top. Give the head and foot forwards. I'm still extending. Move away from my hand. Roll my toe and roll them away. Bring it around. 
And I'm going to take that away here. And when I separate, that's by my ear. And it tugs forward, just put forward. And then I repeat on the other side. I just put that where my toe is. Step back, put it forwards. I'm going to step in, remember I'm stepping further than I need to so you can see. So I'm stepping back and forwards. Sit back, roll back, around, kick. Same kick chair leg. So for your practice at home, it's good if you get you know, a stool or a chair, a kitchen table chair, to put your toe against, to put your toe against, so you get the distance correct. Oh. Hello, Robin. So as I as I step back for the second toe kick, I roll back around, separate and toe kick. Okay. Let's see you getting on. <coughs> Let's check how everyone's getting on. Okay, so how are you getting on? You getting the distance incorrect and the connection correct? So it's always good if you're at home, if you've got a kitchen table or chair leg or something, or if, like some of you in your living room, if you've got something, it doesn't matter what it is, a cushion, just some kind of thing you can use. But obviously, Richard, in the kitchen, maybe you've got a chair. It gives you a distance. You can use a wall, but you just, you just to help you get the distance and your balance. I shouldn't do this on camera, but I'm going to. Hmm. I'm still okay. Can, can, can you just go over the back leg, Mark? I've got it one yep. side, but I'm not so sure on the, um, when I'm coming onto the back leg. Okay. Um, I can't see your feet, Isabel. Sorry? Can you, can you angle the camera down? I can't see your feet. Oh, right. Okay. Um, A little bit so I can see the feet the once so I get an idea what you yeah. mean. Yeah, it's just um I've got a binny. I'm trying to do it on <laughs> I've, got, I've got um I'm open I don't know if I've got this back leg right when I've got when I've got the weight forward and I'm coming on the back when it when I'm, I'm doing the arm back. Okay there and then I've I i do not know if I've got the, the the back leg in the right position. Right, then. So what you're going to do is, um, if your feet are parallel, yeah, come up golden cock and golden cock. Okay, so I'll come up first golden cock, second golden cock, and when I step back to toe kick, right, uh, I'm going to step back and across. So I'm going to cut. So I'm, I'm no, I'm no shoulder width. So I'm going to step back and across. So I'm shoulder widths apart. And turn my toe, turn my toe. So now I'm quite narrow. And when you're kicking, it's hard to quite get in the, on the camera, but you're going to kick to the two corners. So if I'm going cut dead straight, if, I, if I'm to avoid you, but I if I'm going to stay clips down, and golden cock, and I come in dead straight line towards you, straight line, I'm going to do the toe kicks, I'm going to cross the corner. So I'm, I'm on diagonal, I'm at 45 degrees. And then when I turn and out, I kick back 45 degrees. I turn, other one, turn and kick about 45 degrees. Is that what you mean, Isabel? So if I snake creeps down, straight towards the yeah. camera. Towards you. And when I turn two toe kicks, I'm going to step diagonally, diagonally backwards, 45 degrees. And I'm going to roll back around. And I'm going to kick about 45 degrees. I'm going to yeah. step the other way diagonally, 45 degrees, roll back around and kick. So I'm kicking to the two corners. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Obviously, it's easier face to face, but we're giving it a good go. Uh, it's getting used to. You might you might want to do it slightly less than forty five, 
anywhere around 30 to 45 degrees, but you are kind of doing it to the two corners. Kicking to the two corners. See if I, uh, if I move straight into the camera, I'll make a big picture. So if you watch it later, just give me a sec. Okay, I'm doing single whip. Directly in, square, directly in line, straight to the camera. Step back, straight to the camera. Then let's step across to the corner. Roll back. And the kick to the corner. And step back diagonally. Roll back. Around. Kick to the corner. Now when I turn and do a heel kick, it's going to be a straight line again. So when I turn and do a heel kick, straight line again. So um, straight groups down. Uh, this is a straight line. Uh, golden cock, both legs straight line. Toe kicks off to the corner. Heel kick directly behind me. 180 degree straight line. Yeah, you get this, it's getting used to orientate yourself in the space you're in. So here we go. See if I'm going to snake groups down. Open back. Turn the toe in. Under through, straight the foot. Come through. Square my hips up. So you can see, square my hips up. Bring my foot in. Ah. Step back. Up. Now I'm going to step out to the corner. I'm going to hit out to the corner. So step out to the corner. And out the front leg, body front leg. Tip back, move away from my hand. Two in. Around. Separate. Step back towards the corner. Head and hand forwards. Move back away from my hand. Roll back toe. Roll back heel. Separate to the corner. Toe kick. I'm going to turn all the way around. Straight line. So when I'm, toe, when I'm heel kicking, straight line. Okay. That's it, Bob. So when you when you do a heel kick, Bob, it sometimes it's worth when you when, when you move into the front leg to get yourself completely planted in your front leg. You can bring your back foot in, and when you feel stable, then lift your knee up, almost like there's a slight pause, especially around that we talked about your hips and things. It will help take the strain out. Okay. Remember, Carol, when you sit back, you should keep your weight forward. So you can do the toe kicks. Don't go backwards until your foot's firmly planted. It's kind of backwards and forwards at the same time. The thing is, when, when you're going to do when you're going to do any kind of kick, you have to go backwards and forwards. So the, the way to do it is almost exaggerate it. Is that okay? I oh, know I'm going to go backwards and forwards. So you're leaning like a rugby scrum. When you get used to that feeling, then you'll just get the distance to get used to being more upright. And then once you're planted, then you move away from your hands, like in Rapport's Monkey, move away from your hands. How are we getting on? Let's have a look. That's it, Steve. I'm having problems following you from the front to find out which leg's which. I'm better following you from the back. No problem, I can do that too. That's the advantage, I can just turn around. <laughs> okay. So you want me to face away from the camera? Yes. No problem, we'll do. I, I, if you've got your right leg out, I can't do it um, the other way around. I've got my left leg out instead of my right leg. I can't sort of swap legs and get you the right way. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. It's no problem at all. I'll go and do that, man. Thank you.
sat back with my left leg, with a spurred toe fixed, my shoulder back diving with my left leg, move away from the hand, roll back, low, back break, step outside for me, move your waist, roll back, low, step break, turn and kick your heel. Okay, do that again. Good. Do it. Go down. Leg foot. Move through the front leg. In. Up. Step back. Drop the rolling top. In. Up. Step diagonal. Back to the left foot. Kick back. Roll back. Around. Break. Step back to the right foot, second kick. Keep backing away from the hand. Roll back, around, step break. Around, separate, lift the knee, kick. Thank you. Okay. Was that, was that okay? Well, any angle, anything you want us to point, I can change around. And luckily, it's all video, so you'll be able to watch it again later. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Key, key thing to remember: in every every Tai Chi movement, you're always moving into balance. You're always moving to compression and then expanding. So I'm not kicking someone. I'm aligning my body and leading them past, and they're going to walk into my hand or into my foot. If I'm doing golden cock, I'm not kneeing somebody. I'm aligning my body and lifting my knee. And when my knee hits them, it's because they've walked into that, so they hit the floor. Well, all the time, it's um, using the ground, using alignment. So if there's any kind of physical strain or effort you have to put in, like if you're trying to, I don't know, lift a box up with your knee, then you shouldn't be using that knee to lift the foot because if I'm trying to pick a box up or put it on my leg, I'm trying to lift it with my knee. I'm using this muscle here in contraction when really I should support it. I shouldn't be trying to put it on my knee and lift it with this muscle here. I should be putting it on my knee and lifting it with the other leg. So if, if I'm hitting a person, I'm not hitting them with that knee. I'm hitting them with the whole body from the ground. If I'm lifting a box, like if I want to hold the door handle and balance my shopping and lift the box up, uh, or lift the box so I can pick it up easier. I'm not using this muscle in contraction. I'm using the leg in expansion. And once you get practicing what contraction and expansion means in the muscles, that's why it's, I know it's a lame excuse for me to lift up a beer glass, but for me to lift this beer glass, it's not me lifting this muscle here and contracting that muscle there. It's me connecting to it and my whole body lifting like a car jack. And when you, the more you practice lifting small things like cushions or chairs or lifting your hand. Peter Ralston had a phrase that he used to try and get it in his mind. And his, his, his phrase was, hand up, you down. Which what he meant was, if I lifted that hand up, my whole body had to drop down to lift it. And it, it's just that's how he experienced it. But it is good if you want to lift a book off a table. Um, or you've got your baseball cap on. <laughs> Same thing, you just have to get used to. If I put my hat on, that I have to move my body into it. So you practice moving things differently. Because I put my glasses on my face, you practice that kind of refined movement. Uh, push hands with a palm is a tool to test it. It's just a tool to test it. Yes, it is. You can use it martially, but it's really a tool to test refined movement and connection. So if you're using it for health and well being, you'll put the other person out of balance or in balance. If you're using it martially, you put the person out of balance or in balance. There's no, there's no difference. It's easy to use brute force. It's easy to use strength. But, but Tai Chi is not that. Tai Chi is about alignment and power. Um, my teacher used to say Tai Chi is like, well, I, but he didn't used to say, lots of people said it, but he said one particular phrase. We would talk about um, energy like flowing like water and Tai Chi is like flowing like water. He said, yes, yes, and water is beautiful and wonderful and soft and yielding. But if you get hit by a tidal wave, it's a powerful thing. 
And that's what Tai Chi is. If you get hit by the tidal wave, the whole body is a powerful thing. You see, it doesn't matter whether that hit is me like, remember, I'm saying hit, but it doesn't have to be a person. I was hanging the washing out yesterday and lifting the basket and moving the washing and moving my body is a powerful thing. It's a lifting thing for a whole body connection. And so the more we practice Tai Chi, the more we practice mindful movement, the more Tai Chi becomes real in our life. The form is a vehicle to practice body awareness, body connection, by making these slightly strange shapes, by moving your body in space and feeling in balance and difficult angles. Tai Chi is a vehicle to practice whole body awareness and whole body mindful movement. So if you're doing that as a martial art, that's fantastic. If you do it as a health art, that's fantastic too. I spend, I kind of split my time between using Tai Chi for patient rehabilitation and Tai Chi for self-defense. Again, I, I said uh, last this week I've been reading Dan Doherty's book about, um, it's like, um, I can't remember what it's called, uh, but it's his new book about his life when he was a policeman, how he came from being a lawyer and how he went to Hong Kong to train in martial arts and all of his journey. So it's, uh, it's, it's a little book about his life. It's quite easy to read, these short, really short chapters. But also Jackie Chan's book about his life, about training a training in, in Chinese opera and working through being a stuntman and then uh, becoming a film star. Both were pretty much mostly based in Hong Kong. But they were talking predominantly about all the different aspects of using their martial arts uh, for working. So Jackie Chan worked on a building site for years to try and earn money. He used his martial arts to practice how he carried bricks around and how he trained when he worked in the kitchen. He used his martial arts to help him move and correct him cooked, cut vegetables. Dan used his martial arts as a police officer, or, or, although he also did full contact competitions uh, to test his martial arts. But he, he both trained in the art for whole body movement and whole life change. When I first started, it was 30 odd years ago, I, I was young. I used my martial arts, my Tai Chi, as a my not work thing. I did it to, I wasn't at work, I was doing my martial arts. I was doing Tai Chi, I was doing space and time for myself. Mindfulness was not a trendy, brandy thing to say you did, but I was doing mindful movement back then, so it was my escape from work. And I got into it very much as a martial art in terms of fighting and competition. But then much later, I suppose in the mid-90s, I got into using it uh, in hospitals for patient rehabilitation and realized that a martial art is not a thing for fighting. A martial art is a thing for mind and body awareness. Now, if we're using it, for self-defense against other people, that's one aspect. But if we're using it for self-defense against the self, that's another aspect. How we move, how we stand, how we breathe, how we relax, how we connect. It's a whole life training thing. The dance of Tai Chi, the other form, are beautiful. And Kev's been making some wonderful videos uh, and uh, playing some beautiful music uh, and reminding me of Big Trouble in Little China and all kinds of stuff. But all those things are great. We loved all those things. And they are, they are about the fun of martial arts, but the life of martial arts is how do we connect? How do we stand? How do we move? How do we cut the grass? How do we put the washing out? How do we get up out of a settee? If somebody grabs you, how do they fall off balance, not you? If your knees or hips play up through age or arthritis or whatever it might be, how do you realign again? That's what Tai Chi does. It's a whole body musculoskeletal rehabilitation. How we apply it is entirely up to us, but it's not a dance. Dancing is dancing. But if you watch, even if you watch a good dancer, a dancer moves connected, grounded, and flows. Good dancing is dancing. You can see it. I get it. I remember watching people swim. If you watch people who are good swimmers, they just glide through the water like a hot knife through butter. It's beautiful to watch you move. If you watch somebody who's learning to swim, they slap at the water and try. If you watch a basketball player, they connect to a ball as though it's part of them. If you watch a person who, or you've maybe tried it yourself, you smack the ball and can't figure out why it doesn't go. Everything we do, whether it be empty hand form or weapons practice, should all be about body connection and body extension so that we flow through life. And then you could call it, what's that thing called? A flow state. It's worth looking at that flow state. And we get into a flow state we connect whether you are a free climber, uh, a runner, a free runner, you do parkour, you do Tai Chi, it doesn't matter what it is. Martial arts in one family. 
in, in Chinese, Kung Fu is a term that gets used for martial arts, but really Kung Fu means skillful. So you can have Kung Fu drivers, <laughs> the Kung Fu painters. Kung Fu means skillful. It doesn't mean martial art. It just gets used in that way. Wushu means martial art. The Tai Chi and Qigong breath exercise is about mind-body connection. I definitely started in it for fighting, and I still teach it as a fighting art. Uh, but predominantly now I'm teaching people to stop fighting themselves, to align correctly, to breathe better, to move and stand connected. Whatever we do, it's still a whole art. That's the wonderful thing about it. So what I'm asking to do is when you practice, practice the five loosening exercises, get a sense of feeling for how your body connects, be mindful of that. When you practice your form, even remember a movement that challenges you, like snake creeps down or golden calf or the kicks, it's because that, that position in the form that you've done all the foundation work. So by the time you get there, you're challenging yourself in a new way, in a new angle. If it's difficult, it's because it's difficult physically, but mentally, because learning requires a stretch. If it's easy, you're not learning. If it's easy, you're just doing what you've done. Learning requires mentally and physically stretching yourself. If it's easy, you're not challenging yourself. You're not stretching yourself. So by the time you get to the point in the form where you're challenging yourself with angles, you're challenging yourself with your balance, with your positional awareness, it should feel challenging. If you're not ready, just going back a bit. There's no rush. You know, it's, you can practice this all your life. No rush. I hope you're enjoying the sessions. I'll be back home in sunny Birmingham uh, next week, so we'll be indoors again. Please keep up your practice. Thank you very much for all joining in. Have a lovely evening. Okay. Mark. Hi, Mark. Um, do we, can we pay in advance? Are you going to do May and then end at the, finish at the end of May? Yeah, I'm going to finish probably the 20th of May, which will be that Thursday, because ho hopefully we'll all be back from the 17th, which is a Monday. So I'm yeah. hoping to finish the 17th, which will be that Thursday. If people want to carry on after that, we can discuss that. But that's my initial plan. Yeah. If I need to finish the week when classes can start going back. If people want to carry on, great. The Sundays, we're not going to do a Sunday in May. We may do a Zoom meet, uh, yeah. uh, instructor meeting. But we'll do a Sunday face-to-face -face in June. Because I think that gives everybody a bit more time to have had their second jab, to feel more comfortable. Yeah, um, yeah. But it should be still warm enough to practice outside at, in Bourneville on the grass. So we we'll wait and yeah. see. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, I, I want to send you an email. So, okay. Thanks. I've, I've had my second jab. Yeah, excellent. Me too. I've had both my jabs. It's wonderful stuff. And uh, it's all good. The more we do that, the better it is. The more we can all get back to um, the reality of meeting people, which is nice. As I said at the beginning, I must admit, I've kind of used, um, I've kind of used 